You use a two-dimensional array or a rectangular array if you intend to store data in a table form, wherein the number of columns for each row must be the same. But if you intend to use it to store data in which the number of items it can hold for each row varies, then you'll be wasting quite a bit of allocated space for those unused cells. For this scenario, instead of using a two-dimensional array, c -sharp offers another type of array data structure called jagged array. Think of it as like an array of arrays. But unlike with two-dimensional array wherein the data items are stored in the location specified in the row column index dimensions, in jagged array, it only holds the reference of another array in its first dimension, meaning that for each cell, instead of storing actual data item, it stores only the address of another array that holds the actual data items, similar to a pointer in C language if you will, thus making an illusion of you working with a rectangular array but with different number of columns. The truth is, you are really working with different arrays for each row, thus we can define jagged array as collection of arrays. So to declare a jagged array, we don't use comma inside a square bracket to define dimension, but rather we place a separate bracket to denote a reference to another array. The size of the jagged array can be defined using the new operator to specify how many arrays it can reference, making this definition looks like a row in a two-dimensional array. Then, the inner reference arrays need to be initialized as well using the new operator before any access operation is made. Because by default, there are no inner arrays yet, and each cell in your jagged array is pointing to null. So any attempt to access data in a specific location will result to a null reference exception and your application will break. To access element in a jagged array, just provide the array name and specify the row and column in two separate square brackets. This code reads information system and prints it in a console window, and this code assigns a new value of bsmat at location 04. To traverse in a jagged array, we can use the array's length property to access all elements using a nested loop. In the outer loop, you can say courses.length instead of the getLength method used in a 2D array. And in the inner loop, courses index i that length because for every row represented by variable i, the reference array has its own defined size that's different from the other. If you check it in code, I'll use the same jagged array declaration for courses, and I'll initialize all its reference arrays. For the first reference array, I'll create three courses. And then for the second, I'll have two courses. And for the third, I'll initialize four courses. Now, to traverse through the entire collection of courses, I'll use this nested loop that for every row, I'll display a row header course list and then followed by number. And inside the inner loop, I'll display all the courses inside this individual reference array and separate each set of courses with the next line. Let's check the output. As you can see, each reference array's element are displayed per row, and they don't have to be of the same number of columns. One key point to consider, multidimensional arrays are optimized for memory access, since data are stored in contiguous memory locations, but there can be an issue when there is no one large block of available memory to hold contiguous data. On the other hand, jagged array can be useful in this scenario since individual referenced array doesn't have to be placed next to each other in memory. And again, thanks for watching. And if you learned something, please don't forget to subscribe for more programming and circuit design tutorials.